This is our final lesson for the week where we'll discuss the body's fluid connective tissue, blood. This is an area that sometimes confuses students because initially blood doesn't seem to fit those common characteristics of connective tissue that we discussed in our earlier lessons. As we start to examine this tissue more closely, we can start to tick some of those boxes that belong to the connective tissue criteria. Like all connective tissue, blood has an extracellular matrix, which in this case is a fluid. In blood, this watery fluid is called plasma. In this fluid, we have suspended proteins that can form fibres when needed. These fibres help blood to clot under special circumstances. Suspended in this plasma are blood cells or fragments of blood cells. Collectively, these are referred to as formed elements. So you can see why blood is a specialised form of connective tissue. It follows those three same characteristics that all connective tissue types have, but with a degree of specialisation. Further to this, blood functions as the connection between the body systems, transporting oxygen, nutrients, hormones, valuable molecules, and also removing wastes. We can now take a closer look at the formed elements. There are three types. These are our red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Red blood cells are the formed elements that are responsible for the transportation of oxygen. You may sometimes hear them referred to as erythrocytes. They give blood its red colour and also account for half of its volume. White blood cells are the formed elements that are also known as leukocytes. They defend the body against disease and unwanted invaders and form a really important part of our immune system. Actually, they are true warriors, protecting us from disease and infection and helping with the elimination of unwanted visitors such as bacteria and viruses. There are three main types of white blood cells or leukocytes as they're referred to. These are the monocytes, the lymphocytes and then a group of white blood cells whose name end in fill. They're referred to as your neutrophil, your eosinophil and your basophil. Monocytes are phagocytic formed elements. This means they are big cell eaters. They can engulf pathogens such as bacteria and destroy them. Lymphocytes play a very large part in defending our body. They usually leave the bloodstream to take up residence in our tissues and lymph glands. Now the last subtype of white blood cells, those whose name end in fill, include neutrophils and eosinophils which are phagocytic. The basophils initiate inflammation through the release of histamine. The last of our formed elements are just as important and these are referred to as platelets. Platelets are actually fragments of cytoplasm that have come from precursor stem cells in the bone marrow. Platelets are responsible for the sealing off of damaged broken blood vessels. They are extremely important in initiating the body's blood clotting mechanisms. Now at this stage, it's really important to make sure that you've got a good grasp of the different formed elements or blood cells that we've talked about. You remember we had our red blood cells, which we refer to as erythrocytes. We have our white blood cells, which we refer to as leukocytes, but then we've got these subtypes there. If you remember, we have our monocytes, our lymphocytes, and that group of the three cells that have the fills at the end. They include the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and the basophils. And last but not least, the platelets, which are actually fragments of cytoplasm of the precursor cells in the bone marrow. It's important to remember that these formed elements are also suspended in this extracellular matrix that we refer to as plasma. Plasma is a clear watery fluid and it contains a lot of different molecules and proteins that are suspended in it. There's lots of nutrients as we said before and there's also a lot of carbon dioxide that's actually transported in plasma. 
You can see plasma rising to the top of a centrifuge blood sample and it appears as a clear yellowish fluid. Now the waste that cells produce that build up in the tissue fluids are actually absorbed by the plasma and the plasma plays a very important role in removing the body of its wastes. Well we've come to the end of our discussion on blood so it's time again for you to take your knowledge test to help you consolidate your understanding of this specialised connective tissue.